34 AD, 3928 AM. The core teachings of Christianity have much in common with Buddhist concepts, which as we have seen were already popular in Lower Syria. Interestingly, this year of 34 AD was precisely 576 years, a major golden proportion number, after the start of the Buddhist calendar in 543 BC. 576 is 144 times 4, and this year was also 1440 years after Israel became a nation occupying this same land in 1407 BC. Spengler notes, quote, Christianity is the one religion in the history of the world in which the fate of a man of the immediate present has become the emblem and the central point of the whole creation, unquote. This is indeed the difference between all those gods reviewed under 33 AD who are parallel to the gospel story of Jesus. Attis, Horus, Dionysus, Quetzalcoatl and the others were all saviours of the ancient past. Not one single documented historical account can be found about any of them. Not the case with Jesus, a man that has generated so much controversy that entire movements were created throughout history to erase his existence in the historical record as others strove to prove he existed. Christianity emerged simultaneously in all the major population centres of the Mediterranean basin. Antioch in Syria, Alexandria, Egypt, Thessalonica, Cyrene, Byzantium and even Rome. The highways of this faith were the sea. Though partly Jewish in origin, it was a faith strong in Galilee but from its earliest days it is evident that Christianity was a universal and international religion. This new faith was born in antiquity and became the new mould by which men perceived and worshipped their maker. Peter began his letter to the exiles, quote, to the exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia, unquote. This is a list of those countries all occupied by the descendants of Israelites, who, as we have seen already, thoroughly documented throughout Chronicon, were by this time well settled and even in communication with one another. These were the lost sheep of the house of Israel, spoken about by Jesus, who declared that his message was for them. Peter did not minister to the Jews, whose dispersion, the diaspora, had not yet occurred and would not transpire until 70 AD, and then again, and finally in 135 AD, with the total destruction of Jerusalem and Judea by the Romans. The New Testament records reveal that the apostles were sent out to, quote, all the cities of Israel, unquote, to the lost sheep. Revealingly, we learn where the descendants of Israel dwelt by the destinations the apostles reached. Eusebius wrote that Thomas went to Parthia, Iraq, Iran, and this is remarkably supported by the traditions of the Syrian Christians of Malabar, India, who claimed that Thomas founded their own church. The story of Jesus appears to have reached India and Tibet early on, calling him by the name Issa, which is close to the Hebrew Yeshua, Joshua. The accounts are many, but one startling series of facts emerge from these Eastern traditions. They claim John the Baptist is not mentioned that Pilate feared that Jesus would start a revolution in Roman-occupied Judea, and he wanted Jesus dead. They claim the Jews were fascinated with Jesus, not wanting to kill him, and most alarmingly they say that Jesus was never resurrected, only that he taught resurrection. They believe Jesus to be the God-man, but that he died. Historians attest that it is believed that the Apostle Thomas made it to India by 52 AD, Eusebius goes on to report that Andrew went to Scythia on the northern Black Sea coast and that John went to Asia Minor, Ephesus. Peter went to Pontus, Galatia, Bithynia, Cappadocia and southern Black Sea coast where Paul was from. Peter also went to Asia Minor and visited dispersed Jews. Paul travelled to Jerusalem to Hungary and Illyricum, Balkans. As will be shown, Paul may have travelled far more extensively than this. The study of early Christianity in Chronicon has only just begun. As the first century AD is reviewed, more and more light shall be shed on this most fascinating beginning. But from our present vantage point up to 34 AD, it is obvious that the scattered Israelite descendants were unifying under the banner of a new faith with ancient roots, 
that span back to their earliest beliefs as Israelites. Christianity is but a filter by which God continued to fulfill his promises to the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and all those who were adopted into the faith. That a literal man resurrected and ascended has no bearing on the ideal and its acceptance by the faithful. In dealing with future past phenomena, what happened is just as real to us as what could have happened, and God does not damn the soul for so petty an offence as doubt, especially in light of fact that the evidence is wanting. This year was 1480 years after the exodus of Israel in 1447 BC, from Egypt and Moses at Sinai, receiving the law from God. Bonnie Gaunt, Gematria specialist, notes that from the Passover of the Angel of Death in 1447 BC to the Passover when Jesus was crucified was 1480 years. She, like so many others, ends this timeline at 33 AD, when actually the 1480 years ends in 34 AD. Intriguingly, she demonstrates that the Greek title Christ, Anointed One, equals 1480. 1. The Decline of the West 2. The Evolution of the Idea of God 3. History and Quotations 4. The Lost Years of Jesus 6. The Stones and the Scarlet Thread 35 AD, 39.29 AM Traditional Christian date when Pontius Pilate was cited before the Roman Senate and then condemned by Caesar for the illegal crucifixion of Jesus. 37 AD Tiberius Caesar is sick and old but recovering in bed. He is smothered to death in his 78th year. Tiberius is succeeded by Caligula, who was initially very popular with the people. He suffered a coma and emerged to find the Senate opposed to him. Caligula was the great-grandson of Mark Antony. His closest lifelong friend was the Jewish potentate Julius Agrippa, who became his chief ally against the Senate of Rome. The Jewish influence over Roman affairs of state was a source of much animosity against the Jewish people. Caligula immediately began eliminating his political rivals. Suetonius wrote that Caligula was of the habit of saying, when he was having someone executed, quote, make him feel that he is dying, unquote. 1. Tacitus, Annals V.I. 2. The Lost Treasure of King Juba. 3. History and Quotations.